So there are two kinds of logs. One is pessimistic and the other one is optimistic. So both are pretty famous and both have been used in a lot of different applications. So first you need to understand the meaning of pessimistic and optimistic to better understand when we are going to use pessimistic log and when optimistic log is used. So pessimistic, the meaning of pessimistic means it is the feeling uh, of something worst is going to happen. And the meaning of optimistic is that you always like hopeful that something um, bad is not going to happen or some good thing might happen. So pessimistic lock is the lock which most of the people knows and have used. So this is the most common, um, commonly used locking method to ensure the data integrity when there are concurrent operations are happening on that specific data. So I just give an example on the database, we basically put a lock so that only the transaction can only update that particular row, not any one else. That's the kind of lock which is actually the pessimistic lock. So it's the, the usual um, way it works is you basically acquire the lock and then you do some work and then you basically release the lock. Okay, so who has acquired the lock? He has got the hold of uh, that particular data to do any modifications, read and write and update. So apart from this particular guy who has got the lock and no other threads or processes or any connections cannot do any modification to that particular data until unless this guy releases the lock and someone else acquires it. So this is the usual lock which everyone knows. That's what we um, actually call it as pessimistic lock. So let's learn about optimistic lock. As the name itself says, it always thinks all the good thing is going to happen. So what is the definition of optimistic lock? It is the strategy in which you basically read a record and also record the timestamp or checksum or version or hash. And you check the version or all of this information or any one of the information is same um, before you write it. So if the information is same, you can update the record. If it is different, then you shouldn't update. You just need to discard that record. So that's how the optimistic lock works. And there are so many advantages of optimistic lock and they are supposed to be used in only some places, not everywhere. Um, I'm gonna explain all of that later. So before that, I'm gonna take an example to explain how the optimistic lock work. Okay, so basically I have a table, okay? In this, I have three columns. One is ID, one is data, and one is timestamp checks and version on hash. Now I'm just going to pick the version uh, just for the simplicity um, sake of it. Suppose, okay, consider there are like, okay, um, two people. One is this guy, the other one is, so this guy. They both want to, you know, modify the data in this table. Fine, okay. Now let's take a positive case or a happy scenario. In this case, so this guy want to modify the data which is there in the uh, in the table with ID three. So what he wants to do is he want to modify this data thirteen to something. So okay. So let's also have a default version. Okay. Let's uh, have version one one one. Okay. Because it's initial data. So. Let's update the version to 111, okay? So now this guy want to modify this record 13 to something else. Now he maybe he wants to add plus one to this guy, uh, this data. So what he does is he just comes here and look up to the row which has ID three. So he found out this one. He should now read the data and the version, okay? Now what he does is he reads the data and also he reads the version. 13 is the data and the version is one. All good. Now he does some modification. What he does, he just wanted to increment the data. So the new value is 14 and the version he saw when he was reading the record with the ID3 was one. So he has this data and he should go back and then update that data with a you know, row with ID3. So what he had to do is first he needed to check the version. The version which he has and the version which is there in the database, if it is same, that means that he is good, he can update the data. What he will do is, he will check one, one, 
they both the same. So now he can modify the data from 13 to 14. And now he need to update this version from one to two because he didn't modify. Okay, all good. And this guy did nothing. So everything is fine. So we just successfully updated a record in the table. Now let's take one more example and see what happens. So So this guy again want to update this record from 14 to 15. What he has to do, he comes to this uh, row with ID 3 and then he reads the data and version. So what he reads, 14 with version 2. Now, why he is incrementing, he is, this guy is a little slow. Why he is incrementing, this guy came in and somehow he also is interested in ID number three row, and then he also want to increment 14 to maybe 17. What he does also does is he comes here and reads the data and the version. He reads the data, now the data is 14 and the version is two. So, and he wanted to increment it by three. So what he does is he does plus 14 plus four, sorry, three, he basically gets 17 and the version is still two. Now, obviously he will go back to update because this guy is faster and this guy is a little slower so he is still doing the addition okay now let's not worry about him so he will go back and then he update 14 um, to 17 first he will need to check the version so he checks the version 2 and 2 it's good so he can update now what he does is he updates from 14 to 17 and then he will increment the version to 3 because he just did update he need to increment the version to 3 so he's happy and he came back. Now this guy who actually read the data first, now he's finished with the updation. So he has to increment. I think he will increment from 14 to 15 and the version when he read was two. Now he will go back to update it. But first you need to check the version two, three. It's a mismatch. That means that this guy will know that before I do some modification, someone has came in and then has modified the data. If I update this data 50 into this record, the data is going to get corrupted. So he's not supposed to do that because the versions are different. That means that he just need to discard this information what he has. So he will have to recompute the information. So he will again read it. What he has to read is 17 and the version is three. He will have to increment whatever and then he will have to go back and then update. So now there is a easy way to figure out someone has modified or not. Now in this case, as optimistically, he always thinks nothing bad is going to happen. So he always allow others to update when he's doing some work, okay? Even though we have transaction, we basically have isolated this operation. We basically read it and we're doing some updates. Meanwhile, we allow others to update this particular row as well. But if it was pessimistic log, we completely lock this row. When this guy is doing something, this guy is not even allowed to, you know, update this particular row. Sometimes it is okay to allow to read, but it is never allowed to update this information. If it was pessimistic log, when this guy read it, because this guy is slow, he's doing something, okay? This guy is not even allowed to update this information. He has to wait until this guy releases the log and then only he can update. Because it was optimistic log, it was okay to allow multiple people to update when someone is actually, um, you know, doing some work um, on the data which was existed earlier. So there are specific use cases where you have to use optimistic log and there are specific case places where you have to use pessimistic log. You know, it's not always true that you have to always use optimistic or you have to always use pessimistic. It all depends on the use cases. So if it was a database, um, you can, yeah, it's always good to use pessimistic log. If it was some places like Wikipedia, you know, article editing, say, because it they take time, right? Because you have, for example, in the database, you have an article, which is a, a B, C, D. The article ID is step one. So editing article takes so much of time. So what usually people do is they read this, take this information and put it into editor and then they started to type. And then when they come back and update, 
by the time there could be so many people who they also want to update this article uh, if it was a pessimistic log it's like until i finish editing of this article no one is supposed to edit this article but wikipedia and any other you know um, content updation um, portals will basically use optimistic log what it means is that that will basically work in this scenario this way basically i read this information i edit it i can take a day or two to edit that information and if someone really wants to do some updates they are also allowed to update so if they are faster they can read it and update it by the time i finish it if i go back and try to update it it basically does a conflict of version and uh, and i get to know okay someone has already updated i just need to get the new information add my updates and then push it back so this is the place where we actually can use optimistic log and pessimistic log are basically used in as i mentioned in rdb mess and um, you know locking that particular row up uh, and not allowing others to update let's discuss a little bit about the performance thing so how does the how does pessimistic log performs uh, in the distributed systems and how the optimistic log performs in the distributed system since the distributed systems has a lot of concurrency so pessimistic log tends to like a, like holding up a resource um so no other concurrent you know actors can actually get access to that particular document to for document for updation um but since pessimistic log is kind of allows other concurrent actors to modify it it is kind of like holds good for any distributed systems N not a, you know pessimistic log is not the kind of log which basically distributed systems will really like so in case of performance i think i would give a plus points to optimistic log but not to the pessimistic log and there is a general rule of thumb of uh, you know picking up uh, what kind of log we need to use so the simple strategy is if there are very few conflicts in their you know record updation then it's always good to go for using optimistic log say in case of uh, wikipedia itself right so how many people do you think uh, will be trying to update the same article so if it is like thousands of people are trying to update a same article that means that optimistic log might not give a lot of performance the reason being say you have um, so this is the article and so so basically there are like thousands of people or concurrent actors who is trying to update it now because of there are so many people trying to update optimistic log will still allow everyone to you know basically read and try updating right because no one gets the version number right or no one gets the timestamp right so everyone basically go there and then see a different version drop it go there and drop it go there and drop it so no one actually succeeds in updating the actual data it's like like, like too much of chaos there so in this case it's so the performance will be not good because the most of the time is wasted by you know by trying to update and failing to um do so so there are like so many actors everyone is trying to update the conflicts the, the the versions are mismatching so no one is basically really succeeding so on the other hand if there are very few conflicts that means that there are not so many you know concurrent uh, actors or concurrent uh, connections or threads who is trying to update this article so if there are only few people that means that it's good it's okay because not a lot of clash is going to happen between the versions so there are high likely chances that the record will be get updated successfully uh, and not a lot of uh, you know mismatch in the versions but on the other hand if there are uh, you know more conflicts the pessimistic pessimistic log basically works really well how so you basically doesn't even allow anyone to acquire that log itself so it's basically like who are acquires the log they are the one who can basically do the job if it is like wikipedia uh, example pessimistic log will still not perform really well because you can't just lock the article by one person uh, so none of them can pick it up so so there is a fine 
um, distinction, or you just need to understand which lock is better based on uh, the scenario and the kind of feature you want to provide while deciding which kind of lock you need to um, introduce into your system. So, and, and there are a lot of um, drawbacks or, you know, some things which you need to really care, be careful when you're using pessimistic locks, something like you always need to make sure that there are no deadlocks um, in your pessimistic lock because um, there, are, there could be possibility that there are two locks in your system um, and one for A or one for B and both locks are basically waiting for each other. So this guy is waiting for this lock and this guy is waiting for this lock and no one really succeeds. That's kind of deadlock. So you, you always need to make sure that there are no deadlocks in your system when you're using pessimistic lock. And also you need to make sure that there is uh, always a timeout. In case of these kind of problems or in case of even, even a different problem, if uh, a lock is held for more time that you need to make sure that you always have a timeout for locks. Otherwise, the logs are completely locking the table that no one really can do anything about it. So if you have a timeout after some time, the logs will be automatically released. And so the system is still back into action. Um, that's one thing. Um, and also, uh, in kind of pessimistic lock, you always might need a direct connection, um, you know, a live connections between the you know person who is actually trying to lock it and then to the system. So in case of database, you always might need a persistent connection um, to have this lock working because say, for example, transactions itself, right? Uh, you need to have a live connection to the database from, um, from your application server just to keep on issuing the series of um, you know, instruction which actually uh, will be considered as a unit of work. Uh, if not a continuous connection, you still need to have a transaction ID or something which basically have a reference of uh, reference to basically collect all of these individual queries into one unit of work. Uh, but those problems will not be um, really affecting um, in, if you are using optimistic lock because optimistic lock is like it basically was works on the versioning or based on the timestamp. So you basically can um, do a lot of operations asynchronously uh, or uh, without having a persistent connection. Basically, you go and uh, read it. Uh, you have the version. You can go back, do some modification, and then come back uh, without having a persistent connection. So you basically have always a version number to compare before you update. But that's not always uh, easier in case of uh, you know pessimistic lock. Um, I think I have covered a lot of information on pessimistic and optimistic lock. I think uh, um, I, I definitely hope that you guys learned something about how transactions work and how actually locks will be used in transactions and what are the different kind of locks you can use in your distributed systems and when to use it. Um, I think if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and uh, do comment. Um, if you really want to learn something or if you know some new topics, please leave a comment. I'm going to definitely make a video on that. And also, definitely, please uh, share this video with your friends and do subscribe. And also, um, thanks a lot.